Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be kicking off, I'm gonna call this more of like a revamping of a series and then a brand new series. I basically was sitting down and making my list for my monthly favorites and I decided that I wanted to switch things up a little bit. So I know I had done my testing 10 series in the past. I haven't made one of those videos in a little while. I know that I'll do like makeup play times throughout the month where I'll do first impressions of new products. And I wanted to kind of condense my favorites and my testing 10 video into one video that would encompass both products that I'm loving and products that I've tried out recently, maybe a few old favorites I've rediscovered, and also maybe some product fails or things that didn't work out so well. This way I can kind of streamline things instead of having my updates all broken down into different videos so you can see updates on the things I've been testing that I may have used previous in the month to get my final thoughts. So you have one, one concise, easy place to find all the information that you want. So I think what I'm going to call this series is the beauty report or my monthly beauty report because it's not just gonna be makeup. I do also test out hair care and bath and body and skincare so I didn't want it to just be like a makeup focused video. So we're gonna consider this series my monthly recap of the products I've tried, what I thought of them, did I love them, did I not, what worked, what didn't, and what are maybe some of my favorite rediscoveries of the month. And of course, if this is your first or second time here and you haven't seen all those other videos, hello, welcome, my name is Lauren. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna be kept in the loop with my new videos. Also, I always link pretty much everything I talk about as well as the makeup that I'm wearing and other related videos and all kinds of good stuff in my description box. So make sure you pop that guy open if you want to check out any of those other resources. And with all that, being said, let's get into this month's beauty report. So this foundation is something, if you have been watching my channel for a while, is it's not new news. Uh, the Laura Mercier Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Foundation is basically my holy grail. I have very, very oily skin, and this is a quite mattifying foundation, but I find that it looks absolutely beautiful on the skin. It doesn't make me look too greasy or shiny, and it's just my favorite. And what's cool about this is that Laura Mercier actually recently expanded the shade range, which I was super excited about. It wasn't great, but it wasn't awful before, and I'm not sure how many more new shades they added, but it was a significant number. I want to say maybe around 10 new shades. So this is one of the new ones. It is 3N 1.5 Latte, and this is honestly my perfect shade, especially for the summertime. I previously had purchased Macadamia, which is a more yellow golden undertoned light to medium shade and honestly even in the winter it was just a hair light on me but then some of the other shades were either too dark or too pink so i was really struggling to find my perfect shade which sucked because this formula is amazing especially for my complexion so now that they have this new like in between shade it is perfect and i think when my skin does get a little bit lighter in the winter i'll be able to mix this with macadamia to make my perfect winter shade and i'm just super excited so if you were someone that was frustrated with the shade rage previously and you do like the formula or you were curious about it you may want to go ahead over to Sephora and check out the new shades because they definitely have filled in some of the gaps. Then there's this guy here. Now this, again, is a longtime favorite of mine, the Bite Beauty Amuse-Bouche Lipstick. Wonderful formula, very pigmented, very creamy, glides on the lips like butter, super long wearing, has a more satin finish. It's not too glossy, but it's not matte, so it does transfer a little bit, but it really does hold on to the lips well. So I have several minis of this particular formula and I only ever owned one full size shade. Fig was kind of like my go-to for the longest time, but I was using the sample of this, which is the shade Sweet Cream, and I loved it so much that I decided to finally buy the full size and I've worn this so many times within the last month. So Sweet Cream is kind of an interesting color. I actually think it's really unique because it's pink, but it's got some peachiness to it. It's not really a cool toned pink. It's kind of somewhere between a peach and a raspberry. Maybe it's such a very fruity color, perhaps. 
And I love it because it's bright and cheery, but it's not neon, it's not in your face, it's very wearable for every day. And I find that it just really like brightens up my look, like it makes me feel very healthy and young and alive, but it's, it's not too much. It's still a very daytime appropriate, could wear to work kind of shade. So I've been absolutely loving this. It's made me kind of like re-fall in love with this formula all over again. Definitely, if you're looking for a unique, really pretty pink kind of shade, Sweet Cream is worth checking out. So speaking of lip products, why don't we move into some of the new things that I've picked up and tested out within the last month so I can share some of my thoughts on them with you. The first is this guy right here, which is the Flesh Beauty uh, Fleshy Lips Lipsticks, I think was what these ones are called. It's one I'm wearing on my lips right now. This is the shade Moist. And I decided to pick this up because Ulta had their uh, Platinum Appreciation Day. And so I was able to get 10 times points on a bunch of different brands, one of which was Flesh Beauty. I had never tried anything from this brand. This is a new brand carried exclusively at Ulta. It's essentially under the Revlon umbrella. It's their new and first prestige brand. So there's been lots of like buzz about this and I was curious, I decided why don't I just pick up a couple of lip products. I honestly haven't even tried the other one yet so I'm gonna kind of save that to test out in September. But this guy I basically put on like as soon as I got it and I've used it so much because it's such a perfect everyday easy wearable kind of lip formula. So these fleshy lips are a more sheer lipstick. They are not fully opaque but they're not meant to be. It's kind of meant to be more of like a your lips but better tint that's really buttery and really moisturizing. So this shade moist as you can see like when I swatch it it doesn't really show up very, very strong on the skin, but it is kind of buildable. I mean, you can definitely see it. I'll put on a little bit more. Like it shows up on the lips, so you can kind of just apply a little bit or you can kind of layer it up if you want the uh, pigmentation to be a little bit more intense, but it's always going to show your natural lip color through, which I kind of like. It gives that sort of lip stain appearance, but it doesn't have the dryness of a stain. It has the creaminess of a lipstick, which I appreciate. So I actually, really am liking this. I believe these retail for $18, which isn't cheap. I mean, it's not like, you know, buying a YSL lipstick or a Tom Ford lipstick that costs some ungodly amount of money, but you're still investing as much as you would spend, you know, like on lunch and then some for a lipstick. So I think some people may not feel that this type of formula is worth that extra investment when you can get maybe a similar kind of product for the drugstore for half the price. But I will say the packaging on this is very, very nice. It feels good in the hand. The shape of the bullet is really interesting and it's very easy to apply. I've really liked the formula a lot. So I, I do think I feel comfortable recommending this if you're interested in this type of product. Now, if you have been watching my videos since the beginning of the year or longer, you may have seen way back when I did a video on eight brands I wanted to test out in 2018, things I'd never tried before and that I was really curious about. One of those brands was Flower Beauty and I have finally gone out and bought some flower products to test and I honestly have to say I am very, very impressed by all of them. The first thing I got were these Warrior Glitter eyeshadows and this was honestly what drew me in to purchase from Flower at all in the first place. I knew it had been on the back of my mind that I wanted to try it, but I wasn't really in a rush. And then I saw these on the Ulta website. They're brand new, they had just launched. I hadn't heard anybody talking about them. And I happened to, at the same time, get an email from Ulta with a coupon that I could use specifically on Flower products. So I figured that was the universe telling me I needed to pick these up and try them out. So I placed an order and also got a few other things. And these are incredible. These are really, really beautiful glitter, like liquid glitter eyeshadows, similar to the Stila ones. I just did a video on glitter dupes last week, so I will link that for you guys in the cards and also down in the description box if you wanna check it out. But I'll just quickly swatch for you one of these shades. This is the color Blade, which is kind of more of a rose gold champagne. But they are really, really pretty. Very, very sparkly and shiny. They have a really nice pointed applicator which makes it easy to apply them with precision. 
but I just think that these are really nice as toppers. They're only $10.99, so much less expensive than the Stila ones if you're looking for a more affordable alternative. And they had some really cool colors in addition to your standard neutrals. So if you're looking for a glitter, uh, I would definitely recommend checking these out. Again, I haven't heard anybody else talking about them, but I have a feeling one of the big beauty bloggers is gonna catch on to these and then they're gonna like sell out in 0.2 seconds. The other things I ordered from Flower were lip products and these both came highly recommended to me. I've seen so many YouTubers that I trust talk about how amazing these formulas were. So I was curious, I had to pick them up. These first ones here are the Miracle Matte Lips. This is Flower's take on the liquid lipstick. And this formula is incredible. It is so comfortable and so just like easy to apply. It goes on opaque, it doesn't get crackly, it doesn't flake off or do anything weird. So for around $10, I was kind of blown away because so often you trade wearability for comfort with liquid lipsticks. You'll find ones that are very comfortable, but they're not as long wearing. They transfer off on everything, or you'll find some that are really long wearing and transfer proof, but they make your lips feel like the Sahara Desert. These though are really nice because they do dry down pretty completely. They don't transfer very much, but they feel so light and so comfortable on the lips. They're just so nice to wear. They didn't cause my lips to like peel and crack and like chap after I wore them. So I was really happy that I finally decided to pick these up. The two shades that I got are Bare Honey. This one is a really pretty light nude. Uh, really great if you're doing like a smoky eye or something that you want to have a more subdued lip to pair with. And it's not too nude. What I liked about this is that it wasn't too pale. It doesn't give me concealer lips, um, and, but it's not too pink either. It looks really, really pretty on. And then this one here is called Soft Berry. This I think is gonna be a shade I'm gonna wear a ton in the fall. It's like a very pretty rosy kind of berry shade. It's like your lips but better, but a little bit deeper for someone with my complexion. So I think this is again, a really flattering color definitely going to be able to get a lot of wear out of it. And yeah, if you have been on the hunt for a comfortable liquid lipstick and have yet to find your perfect formula, uh, it may be worthwhile to check these guys out. And then of course, because I know I can't resist more lip products, I did also want to try one of their original bullet lipsticks. Now they do have both a matte and a cream formula. They're in the same packaging. Each shade will say what it is. So I got Spiced Petal. I know that Tati, when she was doing her massive makeup declutter, talked about this particular shade and how much she loved it as a nude and she wanted to hold on to it amid the many, many lipsticks that she was keeping and decluttering. Uh, so this is a cream formula, which I actually have been really digging creamier lipsticks lately and having that bit of glossy finish. So this is again, a beautiful nude. I've just been like on a nude kick lately, apparently. Uh, and this packs some pigment, but it's not crazy. It's kind of a little bit sheer. So if you wanted just a wash, you could kind of put it on like a, like a light layer or you could build it up to more opacity. Also the packaging on these is super cute. The liquid lipsticks too. I mean, really everything flower, I feel like looks so much more high end than you, than you would expect given the price points because most of their products are at least lip wise under $10. Some of their complexion is like under 15, but really, really beautiful shade range, beautiful packaging, formulas, A++. Very glad I finally tried them out. So let's talk about this little guy right here. This sponge has received some crazy hype lately thanks to uh, Nikki Tutorials and then Kathleen Lights. This is the Juno & Co microfiber sponge. Uh, this was sent to me in PR uh, and it was sent to me before Nikki filmed her video. And it's funny because I had it and I had used it, but I hadn't used it on camera. And then she filmed that video and I was like, well, Nikki, you beat me to it. This guy is really interesting because it is a beauty sponge, but it has this sort of flocked velvet like texture on it. So it's almost a little bit like using a makeup brush but also a sponge. It's like a sponge and a brush had a baby and you're using it to apply your foundation. And I have found that when I use this, much the way that Nikki shared in her video, the coverage you get out of your foundation is much better than it normally is with a sponge. Typically speaking, I find that sponges tend to sheer out product, 
brushes tend to help you build up coverage. This kind of helps you keep the level of coverage that you get with a brush, but is airbrushed the way a sponge is and doesn't leave streaks on your face. So it's actually really cool. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. The other thing I found this to be particularly amazing for is for setting my face with powder, with like a loose powder. I don't normally bake, and especially I find that like people will take their wet sponge, they'll dip it in their powder and you put it on and it's just so heavy. There's so much excess product that you're losing that even when you're dusting it away and it's to me A, kind of wasteful and B, always would make my skin end up looking very crepey and dry, which is funny because I have really oily skin. But for some reason, when I use this with like my Cover Effects Perfect Setting Powder and I use it to press the powder into my foundation, it just sinks right in and melds with my foundation and it looks flawless. It's crazy. So I've been really pleased with this. It's a $6 sponge. Uh, you can get it from the Juno Co. website and I do have um, an affiliate discount code with them for 10% off. So if you want to save an extra 10%, you can choose to use that if you want. All the information, again, will be linked in the description box if you're curious. But I do think that this sponge is worth the hype and worth checking out, especially at the price point. I've really been enjoying it. The one thing I will say, and you can kind of tell perhaps by looking at this, I find that this is a little bit more difficult to clean than my regular beauty sponges. I feel like it stains a little bit more easily, especially if you let the foundation dry on the sponge. Because it's got these little fibers, I feel like sometimes it's just harder to fully get all of the product out because it kind of like dries a little bit to the fibers. I think if you are diligent enough to clean your sponge right after you use it, then you probably would have no problems. But let's be serious, who does that? Do you do that? I, I am too lazy to do that. So let's talk about a couple of BoxyCharm products. I'm pretty sure I got these in my August box. They may have also been in my July box. I really cannot remember for the life of me. But I did receive both of these products recently in BoxyCharm and I tried them out for the first time this month. And one of them I'm obsessed with, one of them I think is kinda okay. The one I'm obsessed with is the Chella Tantalizing Taupe Eyebrow Cream. This has become my new favorite brow product. It is amazing. Now, I fell in love with Chella a long, long, long time ago, back when I was still subscribed to Birchbox because their ivory lace highlighter pencil, it's like still my holy grail for carving out the underside of your brows if you want them to look really clean and sharp. It's like the perfect nude pencil if you have yellow undertones to highlight your brow bone. Stunning, fantastic, I love it. So this was exciting because I haven't tried too many other Chella products and I found this to be so natural and so long wearing. It was just amazing. So basically what this is, is that you have a little angled eyeliner brush on one side and then on the other is a little twist off compartment that has essentially a brow pomade in the bottom of the cap. I think this packaging in a way is really genius because so often if you want to use a brow pomade, you have to have like a little pot and then you have to have the separate brush and it's just kind of a pain in the butt, especially for traveling. But this keeps the brush protected because it's like kind of all in one handy little package. The one thing I have seen as a complaint from other people is that this will get dirty and it will. What I tend to do as I have like spot cleaner, like I have my little Japanese spot brush cleaner, I'll spray a little bit of that on a paper towel and then just wipe this off when I'm done using it. That way it doesn't get gunked up and caked up with product over time. But what I love about this is that the actual tone of the product, the shade I have is tantalizing taupe. It is perfect. It is really, really creamy and it is quite pigmented, but also easy to blend out. So if you want to have like a really sharp, um, like defined tail of your brow, you can do that. But then if you want to kind of fill in the rest of your brow, you can kind of shear the product out or draw like smaller, more natural strokes and it's not too harsh. So I've just found that this really fills in my brows so beautifully. Once I do it, it does not budge all day long. It just is like, it's in there, it dries down completely. It's amazing. And I've just found it to be really easy to work with and just a perfect color. And I just, I love it. I'm so glad that I got a chance to try this because I probably would have never thought to buy this on my own if I hadn't been sent it in BoxyCharm. Now on the flip side, 
I've been kind of like meh about this Wonder Beauty Unleashed Volume and Curl Mascara. This was again something I was sent in BoxyCharm. I love the packaging on this. I think it's really cool. It looks like a squeeze tube and it is definitely pliable but it's a mascara. And in a way it's nice because I feel like you'll really be able to get all the product on the brush as opposed to it just being stuck to the sides of a traditional bottle that's rigid. But when it comes to how this mascara actually applies on my eyes and the effect that it gives, it's a little more natural than I typically go for. I'm all about the dramatic, voluminous, mega ridiculous lashes. I have really big eyes and my lashes are naturally kind of very straight and they sort of point out. So I usually need to like curl my lashes and use something very volumizing and dramatic to make my lashes sort of offset the large space that I have on my eyelids because otherwise I feel like my lashes just get swallowed up in my eyes and they look non-existent. I didn't notice any like flaking or smudging or any irritation when I used this product, which is nice. I do appreciate the formula in that respect. I just didn't feel that it gave me enough oomph for my personal taste. Like I love the Lancome Once You're Big. I love the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. I want my eyelashes to look like I'm going to the Grammys, not like I'm going to the grocery store. You know what I mean? So if you are someone that likes a more natural look or that has naturally more full lashes and doesn't need something super intense, you may really like this formula. I think given Wander Beauty's whole aesthetic, which is very natural, very everyday, on the go friendly, this is exactly the kind of mascara I would expect they would make. They are not all about the super ultra glam. So again, I kind of feel like I can't really hate on it. Like I don't think it's a bad product. It's just not my personal cup of tea when it comes to mascara. On the flip side though, let's talk about some mascaras I actually didn't like and I, I cannot recommend even to someone that wants a more natural lash. I was sent the Grande Cosmetics Lash Primer and their mascara. I've used their lash serum and I found that to be actually pretty cool and it does help to make your lashes grow longer and thicker. I also tried quite a few of their lip products and I have also enjoyed them as well. They're very um, plumping and they have the kind of like tingly sensation. Nice stuff. This though, not a fan. So your primer is your standard white mascara primer. You gotta make sure you cover the whole thing completely up or your lashes look crazy. It was a little bit plasticky. I didn't really find it to be super nourishing. It's supposed to be infused with peptides. Honestly, I still think the actual like lash serum is gonna do more for your lashes than this does. I mean, of the two, I definitely prefer this product over the mascara. The mascara was a total fail for me. I just don't use lash primers on a regular basis. I find them to be a little unnecessary. So if you love lash primers, this wasn't bad. It didn't irritate my eyes. I just, I didn't really love it. But this guy, I just did not like this at all. The packaging is cool. I love the gold, but I just found that this brush did nothing. It has very short bristles. They're that kind of standard natural bristle that you find in classic mascaras. It just didn't really apply very much product to my lashes. They didn't really look any more voluminous. They didn't look longer. Yes, maybe it made them black, but they they looked more sparse when I used this than if I didn't, which was really disappointing. And as a brand, Grande Cosmetics is not cheap. So I know that this duo would be pretty expensive. So in my opinion, not worth it at all. I actually really like the Pixi Lash Primer. I don't like any of their other mascaras, but the lash primer they make is really awesome. I think I preferred that one to this and it's way cheaper. And there are like a million mascaras that I prefer over this one. So yeah, just not, not a fan of this at all. I feel like this video is gonna be like an hour long, guys. I apologize. Now I've got so much stuff to talk about. We've got a few more things. We're, we're still working on it, but but we're, we're getting there. So let's talk about some lip balms. Both of these products are things that I've been using for a while now and I have been absolutely loving and I think that they are doing wonderful things for my lips. This first one is from Frank Body. It is their lip tint in the shade Send Nudes. So it's basically a nude tinted lip balm. And I picked this up at my local Ulta. I think it retails for around $12. And I had seen a few different uh, YouTubers talk about this and say how much they enjoyed it. So I was curious and I'm addicted to lip balm. So I had to try it out. It has one of those little slant tip applicators. So it's pretty easy to keep it clean. I definitely appreciate this kind of lip balm over one in a pot because the pot ones are just so unsanitary, especially for use on the go when they're living in your purse. 
how clean are your hands? You know what I mean? So this has tint to it, but when you actually apply it to your lips, it goes on pretty much sheer. It has just like a very slight subtle hint of color. It's kind of like a cream nude shade. Really, really pretty. And much like all of the other Frank Body products, this is infused with coffee extract. So it smells like coffee. Now, I recently went into Sephora and swatched those new Bite Beauty French Press lip glosses. So I was thinking about buying one, and then I decided not to because it's just a lip gloss, and honestly, they didn't really smell very much like coffee. This, on the other hand, smells a lot like coffee. If you don't like that smell, you're probably not going to enjoy this. And it's not like a latte smell, it's like a black coffee smell. So it's a little bit on the strong side. I personally kind of like it, but it may not necessarily suit everyone or be something everyone will be into. But I do really love the way that this feels on the lips. It's very hydrating, it leaves a nice amount of shine, and it does have that nice newer lips but better kind of tint to it because it is nude, but it's not like a milky nude where it leaves that kind of weird sheen that's sort of half see-through and, and just kind of strange. It's just a nice, healthy shine on the lips, and I've really enjoyed wearing it. It's something that's basically lived in my purse a ton in August, so uh, if you're looking for a new lip balm and you like coffee, this one is definitely worth checking out. And then if you're a tea lover, I got you covered as well. This is the Winky Lux Matcha Lip Balm. How cute is this packaging, by the way? It's like a little pill and it's rose gold. So adorable. These retail for $14, so a little bit more expensive than the Frank Body Lip, uh, lip Balms. But this is freaking amazing. First of all, it smells like heaven. It's basically infused with matcha and vanilla extract, so it smells like a like a matcha latte. It's so delicious. And while it is green in the tube, it goes on completely clear on your lips. It doesn't leave any weird green cast. And it's just so insanely hydrating, so moisturizing. It feels really nice and it doesn't disappear off your lips after two seconds, which is one of the things I hate with stick lip balms like this. So many of them, like your traditional chapsticks, you feel like you have to reapply 300 times a day to keep your lips like hydrated. Not the case with this, it holds on for hours. And I also don't feel like this causes my lips to peel at all, which a lot of other lip balms and lip treatments can do. Like they will moisturize your lips so they'll hydrate them, but then your lips kind of peel constantly, all of like the dead skin off and it's really annoying. No peeling with this. So if you like the scent of vanilla or matcha, this is such a nice lip balm. I mean, it's a balm. It's not like, you know, it's gonna change your life, but it's really cute, really handy to throw in your purse, and I've been enjoying it thoroughly. All right, I've got three more products to share with you guys. One of them is a total and utter fail, and then two of them are pretty good. Why don't we get the fail out of the way? Because uh, this severely disappointed me. Uh, I tried out this month these Fizz and Bubble bubble bath candies. I've tried some of their other bath products before. If you uh, don't know, I'm like a bathaholic. Even in the summer, I still take baths. It's kind of like one of my favorite things to do to relax. So I picked these up thinking that they would be a lot of fun. It's essentially like a bubble bar, but they're individually wrapped little slices, almost like saltwater taffy. I thought it was so cute. And the two uh, scents I got were iced pineapple and coconut cream, both of which sounded like they would smell delicious. Here's the thing about this though. When you smell it in the packaging, it smells pretty okay, but for some reason, when these get wet, the smell, there's like this, this scent, and both of them have it, that is super disgusting to me. And then my whole body smelled like it all day. It was just kind of off, and I, it's hard for me to describe what it was, because it wasn't necessarily like a rotten smell. It just smelled off. And not to mention, I even tried using two of these at a time. No bubbles. Like it's supposed to be bubble bath candies. No bubbles. The Lush bubble bars are a hundred times better than these and worth the extra investment. Honestly, these weren't even that cheap. Like a tub of these, I think was like around $10. 
and they were buy one get one half off so that's why I decided to pick up two different scents to try them out but I was just really disappointed I wanted to like these I thought they were gonna be awesome but they just smelled weird and they didn't bubble and it was a huge disappointment now, a little while back, I picked up this Tarte Tarte Guard Mineral Powder Sunscreen. I talked about this back in June, I think, before I went to Firefly, and then I realized I never gave you guys an update on whether or not I liked this, so I wanted to talk about it with you. Basically, this is a powdered sunscreen, so you can use it to like touch up your makeup and mattify your skin, but it also has SPF 30, and it has all mineral-based sunscreens in it, which is my preference since chemical sunscreens tend to break me out. Like many Tarte products, it smells like vanilla, which is delicious. And essentially what this is, you have an over cap and then the, the bristles are contained in this little piece that slides down and then you have a pump here. You would click it and then the powder comes out as I just dumped all over myself. And then you kind of just can dust it on your face. Give myself a little touch up right now because I'm looking a little shiny. So as you can tell, there are some pros and some cons to this product. The biggest con is that it's messy. I feel like for some reason, when you click the product into these bristles, it like cannons out through the center bristles, but then the bristles are kind of also a little long and not too dense, like they're not hard, but I feel like the powder kind of gets trapped in the middle. So it's not as easy to spread out on your face. And then you feel like you need to click up more product, but then it's too much. So the actual mechanism is not my favorite. I appreciate how travel friendly it is. It's easy to throw in your purse. I just wish that the actual like brush design was a little bit nicer, maybe a little bit wider and less long would have been a better deal. You also are gonna get this pretty gunky, so it does need to be cleaned. I suppose you could do the same thing I did with the cella and just use like some spot cleaner on a towel and just clean the bristles off so they don't get really grimy over time because you are applying them directly to your face, so it is gonna get dirty and you don't want it to harbor bacteria. But the actual powder itself is really nice. It's quite fine. I do feel like it does make your skin look airbrushed. It doesn't like accentuate dryness or look weird on your face. And I do really like the sunscreen factor. Obviously, this is not uh, to be used as a sole sunscreen for sun protection. But if let's say I'm already wearing SPF 50 underneath my makeup and I just wanna touch up that sunscreen throughout the day without having to take all of my makeup off and put it all back on again, this is just really handy to have, especially to use on my nose because I feel like this is the place where I tend to burn the easiest and also the place where I tend to get the shiniest. So it's nice to be able to touch up both my makeup and my sunscreen with this throughout the day. And then we're on to the very last product. This is the J-Cat Prismetal Chrome Eye Mousse. I don't know if I've talked about this on my channel yet, but I know I have had these for over a month now and I've been using them with relative consistency. I've posted a few looks on my Instagram using these guys on my lids as I've been testing them out. And this is a very interesting formula. It's not your traditional cream eyeshadow. It feels a little bit more foiled than that. Uh, it definitely has like this interesting sort of soft, moussey consistency. You can see like you can squish and press right into it. So it's softer than like the ColourPop Super Shock shadows. And they do have a really beautiful metallic sparkle to them. These do look gorgeous on the eyes. They are really pretty glittery and gorgeous when you blend them out. The only thing is that they can also be quite chunky and a little bit finicky to work with. Like let's take this shade here, it's called Orange You Happy, which is a really cool orange shade. And the thing is when you pick this up first onto your finger, like you can see in the pan, like it's kind of, it's kind of chunky and a little bit flaky. So if you're just patting this onto your lids, some of that chunk kind of stays built up. You have to really like blend these for them to be smooth and have a really beautiful glittery finish, which is a little bit harder to do on your eyelids because you just have less space to work with. Uh, and especially if you're applying these on top of a powder eyeshadow and you're just wanting to like pat them on or put them on with a brush. With a brush especially, they can be really chunky. So honestly, these might be prettiest just blended on a naked lid and then you can like take a brush and blend some matte shadow into the crease 
use as a transition, but I think they kind of almost need to be like rubbed in to be as brilliant and as smooth as they have the potential to be. As an FYI, this first shade I swatched uh, over here, this one is Chrome Galaxy. This one again is Orange You Happy. I also have Champagne Wiz, which is this really cool pink color. Let's give that a nice little swatch here. So you can see like, they, yeah, they start out really chunky and then they blend out into this beautiful, highly reflective, glittery, gorgeous finish. And the last one I have here is called Fiery Bolt, which is a cranberry red. I bet you this will be super, super stunning for the fall. Look at that, oh my God. I mean, these are really beautiful and they're only $6, so they're very, very affordable if you want that really, beautiful, glittery, metallic, shimmery kind of finish on your eyes. You just have to know how to work with these. I mean, once they're on, they are quite long wearing. They don't like smudge and budge around or fade really easily. And I, I personally don't have a lot of trouble with creasing on my eyes based on the way my eyes are shaped. So I can't really speak to how well these crease. I haven't noticed any issues, but if you had hooded eyes because this is a cream product, Maybe it would be prone to creasing, I don't really know. Uh, I just think that these have been really fun to work with, really fun to play with. Uh, you just have to be a little careful because yeah, again, over a powder eyeshadow, I think they have a tendency to chunk up. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys again so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this new format. I know these videos are probably going to be a little bit longer, but I'm also hoping they'll be a little bit less repetitive and I'll be able to update you more thoroughly on the products I've been testing so you're not left hanging, wondering what I thought of things. If you're digging this new series idea, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. I always really appreciate your feedback. And again, if you're not subscribed to my channel and you want to see more of my videos in the future, make sure you click that button before you go. And with all that being said, I'm actually about to go to yoga right now, hence my being in these comfy clothes. So I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in my next one. Bye.